Hello humans, this is Tommy in camera and today we are going to be recreating the title burn from John Carpenter's The Thing. Now if you look at that opening shot from Carpenter's film, you'll see that that burn actually comes in over a shot of planet Earth, just after the spaceship has crashed through the atmosphere. So this title burn shot is in fact one element of a final composited shot. But don't worry, we're going to be shooting that planet shot in camera in another episode. Alright, okay. <laughs> planet. This is genius. I feel like a giant space camera god. I know. But first things first, it's time to set fire to things. So we're in Studio 2 now. Uh, this is actually an ideal space for, for doing this volumetric light work because we've got blackout drapes here that we can literally just wrap around the studio and take all the light out of the space. I'm working with James. And he's just uh, demonstrated that we've got this set flat here that we cut a hole out of so that we can move a camera through it for a music video. And it happens to be exactly the same size as the glass stencils that we've had made, which is fortuitous. So we're going to use this, but obviously if you don't have something like this lying around, you just essentially need to make a kind of blackout box, um, which we're going to create. This is, this is the basis for our thing, but we still need to do some work to make it workable. We're going to be using stencils made from vinyl and then stuck across glass. They're essentially like stickers, which we are then going to mount on our set flat here, which is very conveniently exactly the same size uh, as the stickers themselves. So we're basically just going to stick it with gaffer. We've also glued some spaces on the back of the glass, which will keep the material we're going to set a light separated from the glass so it doesn't get stuck as it melts away, hopefully. The idea being that as it melts away, it will allow those smoky light rays to start spilling through. So we're going to prop it, drop in our glass stencil, black out everything around it, backlight, smoke, magic. Let's do it. Now I'm a big believer in using what's available to achieve the effect you're setting out to capture, hence why we're setting up like this. But essentially you can create this effect by building a rigid frame to attach your stencil to and then a box around it to hold in that smoke and keep the backlight from spilling. So for our backlight, we're going to use a tungsten lamp as they would have back in the day. We're using this little 150 watt dimmable dado lamp. So we've got a little bit of control and then we're going to set our camera to 32K. So that'll take it to daylight color from the camera's perspective. And then we're going to stick a full CTB gel over the top to give us that lovely blueness. Next up, we black out the surrounding area with bin liners, which we will reuse. We offer up our stencil and we're happy we can just tape it in place. But we really want to get this right. So we decided to do our first takes using the in-camera logo as a test. And you know, if we come away with a take of our logo revealing itself, a la thing, that'd be a pretty sweet bonus. Because we're shooting this in the studio, we use the drapes and floppy flags to black out the room and stop spill from the backlight. But this effect really doesn't need all of this. You can achieve the same effect by building a large box to fire the backlight through. If this is something you'd like us to maybe put together in a later show, let us know in the comments. So now we're all set, we figure it's probably a good idea to conduct a test burn outside since, you know, it's been a while since we set fire to things as kids. Just so we know what to expect and what to prepare for. Like, for example, those little flaming dripping guys, which make a wicked sound, by the way, but they will make a mess. So make sure you cover your floor with something that, you know, won't set on fire. So because we haven't built a bespoke, compact and frankly far more efficient box in which to create this effect, we're going to have to bring out the big guns. Now this is called a cult smoke machine and this is actually used by the fire department to fill entire buildings with smoke for training exercises. So this should probably do the job. If you're filling a space with smoke, a good method is to use a little flag or something similar to spread that smoke out. Just give it a waft. We put smoke behind the stencil so the light within the actual text looks nice and consistent. Then we put smoke in front of the stencil to create those lovely volumetric light shafts as the plastic burns away. 
so we attach the bin liner to the spacers using crop clips, then trim off the excess. Because, you know, let's not melt any more plastic than we really need to, yeah? Okay, right, so we're all set up. Um, we've got our, uh, essentially a bin liner uh, strapped across the back of our stencil. Um, and now we're going to set fire to it. Um, yeah, don't try this at home. And you should probably be wearing respirators as well. Okay, flames are ready. Rolling. So as you can see, the heavy plastic liner went up well. Actually a little too well. I panicked and started trying to blow out the bigger flames in an attempt to control them. But what I ended up doing was just blow melted plastic all over the glass. But thankfully, it cleaned up pretty well. So the first thing we learned the spaces were holding the plastic too close to the glass, probably no more than 20 millimeters. So for the next test, we attached it to the wood frame, making the gap between the plastic and the glass something closer to 50, 60 millimeters. So the second burn started well, but what became clear is that the thick plastic burned big, but a little too slow. And we were still getting thick blobs of plastic forming, which would inevitably hit the glass if they got too big. Which happened. Ah! Again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> right, I suggest we go and stand outside for a little bit. Because yeah. this is... This is, this is not healthy. <laughs> so we went outside, got some air, then came back with a new plan. We tried a thinner bag, but this went up too quick and the fire wasn't dramatic enough. So then we had a new plan. After this many attempts to find the right method, combined with the fact that we'd breathed in quite a lot of fumes at this point, we were confident enough to start getting takes with the main event. So we attached the stencil, covered any possible spill areas, and this time, we stretched two layers of the thin stuff behind the stencil, so we get the best of both Say when. worlds. Don't get burnt. Rule number one. Um, we are rolling and action. And it worked. The burn was fast and dramatic without nasty blobs of plastic. But this was only the first go, and I was worried, and in my rush to protect the pressure stencil, I jumped in and... Oh, I f***ed it. I f***ing hit it. I tried to get the thing away from it, and I hit it. <laughs> no, that looked pretty damn good, man. Turns out it was a good take, but even if one take is good, always get another, just in case. Okay, you ready? Ugh, ready to collapse. Okay. Final take. Camera's at speed. Oh my God, this could be perfect. <laughs> Me, oh my God, man. Are we good, are we good, are we good? I think this is better than the original. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see from these tests, the thick bin liner gave us some problems. Then the thinner plastic was a step in the right direction, but it just didn't have enough weight. And then when we tried the two thin layers approach, we knew we'd nailed it. But before we show you the final <coughs> perfect take, let's head over to JP and see how he put down the finishing touches. Because our goal was to recreate the existing title sequence as close as possible, first I took a screen capture from the film at the point where the title was fully formed. I then drew a vectored outline of the title in Adobe Illustrator. By creating a vector graphic, it can then be machine cut as a vinyl stencil. Using the screen capture as the image for us to match, I transferred it as a JPEG to our camera's external monitor via an SD card. This allowed us to superimpose the title over our camera feed, which enabled us to accurately match the size and perspective in frame as well as match the light ray direction and color. After we shot our two takes, 
there was not much needed in post. Some basic colour correction and curves gave us a fairly close match to the original reference. Some time remapping was done to better match the speed and progress of the title being revealed. We did this by shooting at 50 frames per second and then remapping the time. So here's the footage from take one. As you can see, the burn didn't go entirely to plan, but with some careful cutting of frames, we can cut to the part where the plastic isn't stuck to the glass. And here it is graded. And here it is compared to the original, which is playing top right of the screen. In the documentary, The Thing Terror Takes Shape, Peter Curan explains the process he devised to achieve the original effect. Peter used a fish tank filled with smoke in his version, which we didn't do, but everything else we copied as closely as possible. There is a good written transcript of his interview, which can be found on the Art of the Title website, which explains his process in detail. Anyway, back to our recreation, and on to take two. You can see that this burn was a lot cleaner and symmetrical in the reveal. And here it is color graded and time remapped. I think that even with our two takes, we managed to get fairly close to the original. And it was a fun effect to work out how to recreate. <coughs> I think it's safe to say that we've been successful here today. I might even go so far as to say we may have one-upped Mr. Carpenter. I mean, I'm just saying. Just saying. And I'm still alive, which is good. I think JP's still alive too, although I haven't seen him in a little while. What? Oh, it's cool. He's still alive. You can hear him coughing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little nostalgia trip. I know we did. If you'd like to see us recreate any other classic practical effects from days gone by, you just let us know in the comments. So this is Tommy at In Camera. Until next time. You really want to save those crazy sweets, huh? No, wait, you